Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I show a little after 6.05 on the clock. So let me call this special meeting of the Calloway County Public Library Board of Trustees to order. Um, our first item of business is the public comment. So let me begin with a couple of housekeeping tips. Um, we have overflow in the main part of the building. We do have to ask that those of you who are in the doorway not block the doorway. So if you can move into our overflow area, we will be streaming the events that are going on in here through our camera and it will be broadcast on the screen in the main room there. So um, that will be taking place. So all of you make sure that you are aware that this is being uh, recorded. We're going to begin um, with our first commenters and so you guys are just going to roll just down this line. Sandy's going to kind of direct traffic so we're going to go a row at a time. We've got two minutes per comment because of the number of people who have signed up. So if you need to make some quick edits, um, you can do that as well. We are also taking any physical copies if you want to leave a copy of your statements with us so that we have those on the record also. And then again, I want to emphasize that as far as the board members are concerned, this is listening for us. So we won't be commenting or responding or reacting to um, your statements. Um, feel free to use the full amount of time that you have, but when we let you know that time is up, we will move on to the next person, okay? All right, so our first person is going to be, sorry, let me get my stopwatch set up here. Okay, it's going to be Georgina Taylor. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to stand before the board to state my concerns about the Callaway County Public Library. I would also like to thank the library for putting forth the time and effort to prepare for this event. I have been following the expansion efforts since 2016. This complex project has been years in the making. As we explore a potential expansion, I would like to ask the board and community members to consider what new construction will look like. As it currently stands, CCPL is not ADA compliant in all public and staff areas. The American Disabilities Act was enacted in 1990 and all new construction must adhere to the 2010 revised standards. 3.1 million has been designated for a better library. Even so, we must consider the cost it would take to build a library that is ADA compliant. We must also consider the fact that building materials will go, most likely go up in cost. A major construction project does not happen overnight. Previous library trustees have put many measures into place to help this process move swiftly. If we continue to delay this process, we will only pay more for less. As surrounding counties move forward to accommodate their ever-growing communities, I ask the library board and community members to recognize that we are standing still. It's uncommon and unreasonable to ask for a government entity to pay for a new building in cash. The Calloway County Jail needed to expand and money was requested to do so. Our library is essential to our community and shouldn't be subjected to extra scrutiny when it comes to fiscal responsibility, especially when 3.1 million has been designated in building funds. Fiscal responsibility is essential to this process. I am also a mother to four children. When I go into the children's section, my children take up the entire seating available. <laughs> this is unfortunate. I am sitting on a floor against the wall against the door of an office. I find this to be concerning. I find this to be unreasonable. One table and four chairs are not enough for the children of Callaway County. Thank you. James Gallimore. Yes, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. More importantly, the public and the passion that the public has for the library and the expansion that we need. I think everybody here is very passionate about that or they'd be home watching TV, watching a ball game or something. So I'd really like to thank the public for coming out and showing your enthusiasm how important this library is to everybody. Uh, I want to share my personal experience with the library. I own the property next door, the old Higgins house. And I've been coming, going back and forth at all times of day and night, working over here when we can. And there's always somebody over here. It doesn't matter. There's people coming and going. It's not just young kids. It's older adults. It's just a wide range of people that I see over here. Um, that's my experience with people, what's going on over at the library. Uh, after the last board meeting, I talked to Mr. Kennedy afterwards and told him I'd be willing to help with a building committee, if we could get a building committee together, go over the information that we've had from the architects and try to get this ball going 
and get some community members that's involved and passionate and have some interest that would want to be involved with this and get this thing going. So I'm offering my services and if anybody else wants to help, I think we can do this because it's not going to get any cheaper, it's just going to get more expensive. Uh, but I think we need public input on that. We've got a wonderful architect that's drawn up some great plans and they're amazing. I've looked at them all afternoon. And I think we need to get with this because it's not going to get any cheaper. Uh, this library is passionate. The people are passionate about it. And uh, we need to get with this. And I'll be willing to help. And if anybody else wants to help, I think they need to step up and do what you can. Thank you for your time and thank you for what you've done tonight. B. Martin. Thank you. Uh, I've been to several of the trustee meetings in recent months, and I think first thing I want to say is I think we need to tone down the harsh rhetoric uh, on all sides. Um, I think the late Aretha Franklin had it right. We need to have respect for everybody, even when we have uh, potential disagreements. No excuses. I know that there are some who are, don't want to uh, bear additional cost for the library. Uh, they don't think it's worth it, or maybe they don't use it, whatever. As Georgiana said, uh, a few years ago we had a jail tax put on when it was decided that we needed a new jail facility. Uh, fortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to spend much time there myself. <laughs> but I'm glad it's there for those who need it, and I'm willing, I was willing to pay my share. And uh, I think the analogy is not complete, maybe, but close enough that you get my point. Our county has grown a good deal since 1970 when uh, this facility was first constructed. I hope it will continue to grow, and as it grows, the technology has changed. At that time, leading technology was probably uh, card catalogs and color TV. Uh, we've gone a long way since then, and we've done a lot to keep up with that, but we need to keep strive striving to go forward and keep the technology modern and up-to-date to do the programs and services that, that are necessary and the space in which to do them. My dad grew up in a different era, but I think his wisdom is applicable to any time. He said, if you want to dance, you got to pay the fiddler. I think if we want to have a, a good library that serves the needs of Murray and Callaway County, we got to be willing to pay for it. And I hope you'll make the decision to do that. Thank you. Sandy Sasso. First of all, I want to thank the trustees for your recent support of the library by your decision not to lower the tax rate and to provide a 2% raise for library employees. Um, I want to thank you also for having this opportunity for people in the community to share how they feel about the library. However, as a concerned taxpayer of this county, I'm troubled by the tremendous lag in the expansion of our library. Previous boards have already done surveys of residents, that was 2014, and have hired consultants and architects. To begin this process again is a huge waste of taxpayer funds. Why can't the current board build on the progress of p previous boards rather than starting all over again? Every hurricane makes building materials more expensive. Um, almost 30% of Kentuckians do not have access to high-speed internet at home. I'm one of those people. I, can, I don't even get DSL. We have no internet access. I can get free access at the library, but there are only 13 computers available for public use due to the cramped space of the library. I'm lucky enough to have a portable device, but not everyone is. Since 1976, the library's physical space has not changed at all, while the population of this county has increased by 8,000. I moved here in 1980. The library's the same. We have to invest in our community if we want new businesses and industries to locate here. Murray is growing. Not all neighboring communities are. Our tax base is growing. If we want to continue to grow, we need to support our public institutions like the library, which is free to all. One way to look at this issue is to consider how much money we have not spent in the last 42 years. <laughs> A beautiful new library will send the message to Ann Landini. A public library is a great equalizer in a community. No matter if you're young or old, rich or poor, male or female, 
African American, Asian, Caucasian, or Hispanic, with an eighth grade education or a PhD. A public library offers physical and electronic resources and programming for you. A public library is the only entity in a community that provides lifelong learning and educational opportunities for all citizens. A 20th century library, such as the one in which we're meeting tonight, was designed mainly to house printed materials and maybe to provide one area for programming. In order to host this special call meeting tonight, three scheduled library programs had to be canceled because this community room is the only space available. This is not acceptable. However, a library designed to meet the needs of library users in the 21st century will have both flexible and functional space so that it can house physical resources, electronic resources, along with several programming areas. A 21st century library is designed to be used by all its patrons. A 21st century library will serve as the center of a community. It will look to the future rather than to the past. And with its design, will be able to adapt to the changing needs of the community. The expansion of this library has been discussed and studied for several years. It is time now to act and build for the future. I encourage our current library board members to visit several of the newly renovated and newly built libraries in Kentucky and surrounding states to see how they utilize their space to provide lifelong learning opportunities for the citizens in their area. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey, Mark, uh, Winfield, Joe, and Riley. Thanks for um, putting this together. Uh, Callaway County Public Library should be celebrating its one-year anniversary for its renovation and expansion. The architectural firm of 5253 from Louisville was ready to go, and the financing was ready to go with bonding and grant monies on the table. This on the tail end of years of planning a professionally-led strategic plan that was finished in 2011 and 13. Years of saving toward go the goal of an expanded modern library. That was two years ago. In the meantime, Henry County, Kentucky, Wayne County, Kentucky, and other libraries have earned millions in grants from the state to build their new facilities. Callaway County will not receive grants because of where we are in our uh, stunted process. Opportunity costs are significant. So here we are, starting from scratch without a plan and the price has gone up. When I read 13 million payback, that's a fact, in the Ledger and Times article, it raised a red flag for me. I've been hanging out with Larry Gouin, who's a retired finance professor at uh, Murray State, working on the pension stuff in Frankfurt, and I uh, decided that I needed to call some people in finance to find out if that was even close to being correct. And I found out it wasn't. It wasn't close at all. Here are some numbers that I got from three different sources, and I won't tell you who they are because they didn't want to be mentioned tonight. And I can understand. If no cash is used for a down payment on a $6.5 million uh, price tag for 15 years at 3.55%, which is an average for this type of bond, the total interest and principal payback would be about $8.3 million. And, or if you want to go 30 years, $10.9 million. Nowhere close to 13. And the annual debt service amount would be about $300,000 to $550,000. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Nancy Muir. I'm Nancy Muir, and I've been a patron of the Callaway County Public Library since I was a student at Murray State. I want to address the ongoing dialogue concerning library expansion. In 2010, the Board of Trustees embarked on a much-needed strategic plan. All areas of the library were looked at, and trustees, staff, and community stakeholders were involved in the process. In 2011, that plan was adopted. Five goals were identified along with key concepts. Goal number three was to enhance library services by creating new space and utilizing the existing space effectively. This included the key concept of developing a plan for evaluating facility expansion. The majority of the goals being met in 2013, the Board of Trustees initiated the process of updating the plan. 
The main outcome of that was that the library needed to be expanded. Weaknesses were addressed. The major challenge identified was the facility does not meet the needs. Therefore, the biggest opportunity identified was to expand the facility. Three committees were formed, internal needs, external best practices, and financial feasibility. The makeup of these committees included trustees, staff, and community members. These committees reported their findings to the Board of Trustees, who then began developing the plan for expansion. To sum up what I've just said, the planning for expansion has been ongoing for years. So why now has this Board of Trustees decided to get community input on what the needs of the community are concerning library expansion? The previous trustees, along with staff and the community stakeholders, have done their due diligence in determining that expansion is needed. Your duties as trustees are laid out in the trustee manual. In my opinion, your top two duties are to be an advocate for the library and to plan for the future. It's time to move forward and make Callaway County Public Library a facility that meets the needs of this community. Hello board members, members of our community, and library staff. My name is Ashley Ireland. I am a proud citizen of Callaway County, a proud library supporter, and dean of the Murray State University Libraries. I am not new to Callaway County. I first came to Murray in 2001 as a freshman from rural Henry County, Kentucky that just got a new library. After graduation, I moved away for a while to earn a master's degree and was honored to have the opportunity to come back upon completion of that degree. I've been dean since 2015. As such, I would like to talk with you about the differences between public and academic libraries. <clears throat> MSU's libraries do strive to serve our community, as reflected in our mission. However, our primary obligations are to our students, faculty, and staff. Within that, we are very different than a public library whose mission is to provide our community free and equal access to information, materials, services, and programs for personal enrichment, enjoyment, and lifelong learning as quoted from the CCPL mission. Our greatest difference by far is the nature of our collections. MSU libraries primarily acquire materials to support curriculum. For instance, our books on investments aren't how-to guides for individuals seeking a better retirement. Instead, they are books that are used to teach theory and trends to our finance students. We do not buy bestsellers. We rarely have more than one copy of an item. The majority of our collections are academic nonfiction and are organized by subject. In fact, when new students ask us where the fiction section is our, or popular books are to browse, we often refer them to the public library. Further, we have very little in our collection aimed for children or young adults. What we do have is for, um, to develop educational units. Regarding technology, non-MSU affiliates do not have access to our computer lab due to security measures. Our community may visit Waterfield to access our electronic databases, but only if they bring their own tablet Thank or... You. Thank you. My name is George James, as she just said. Thank you. Uh, I live in downtown Crossland, a community just west of Hazel, as probably most of you know. We're not growing very fast out there. But at any rate, I'm a supporter of library expansion and, and, and library renovation uh, as reasonably necessary to meet the needs of our community. I've only recently aware, became aware of all the controversy. Generally, I am opposed 
to borrowing any significant amount of money, bonds or otherwise, to expand to something more than will adequately and functionally meet the needs of our county for the next 10 to 15 years. Number three, if we cannot afford within our present means to have all the thrills of the more expensive library plans, we should prioritize and focus on what we can afford. In my humble opinion, the priority should be focused on our children and youth programs. A lot of emphasis should be also placed on digital literacy. Thank you very much. Thank you. I live out on the east side of the county, and I want to address three points. The first point is I haven't heard very much discussion at all about how to reach those out in the county. This is a county library, I thought. So I think that we need to focus some of our effort on how we're going to reach the county, whether it's expanded bookmobile services or perhaps even building some small permanent structures out there in the county as uh, sub-library, something about the size of what we have at our American Legion, a beautiful building and they're not very expensive. The second point I want to make is from what I find looking at the KPLA website that the expansion sh should probably be somewhere between six and 12,000 square feet uh, and that's what we ought to be looking at. Uh, anything more than that I think is uh, not needed. The main point that I want to make is I've looked at several example library expansion projects on the 5253 design website that appear to be comparable to ours. For example, Mercer County expanded their library by 11,000 square feet for $3 million. Madison County, which is where EKU is, uh, expand, is being expanded by 20,000 square feet in a three-story facility for $4.5 million. If I understand our situation here, we've got $4 million that can be used to expand the library. Surely if Madison County can add 20,000 square feet for $4.5 million, we can do, do, do find something for $4 million, not $6 million. Uh, and also, we can probably, within that framework, have enough money to perhaps build some uh, sub-libraries out in the rural communities. Because as I said at the beginning, this is a county library. It's not just here for Murray Middle School. Thank you. Gina Kreider. Hi, um, I'm Gina Kreider. I'm a proud public school teacher in the county. Um, public schools and libraries are essential everywhere but especially in a state like Kentucky where our poverty rates are high. Here they provide that leg up to those with a more challenging start and we have a lot of folks like that. I'm asking you to please send a message to our kids that lifelong education is worth the investment, that they are worth the investment. Please move forward with the expansion. Larry Albert. Thank you. I have no prepared plan. It's contemporary. Uh, I'm quite satisfied with the library services we've got. I use computers on a regular basis. I've never found, never looked for a book that I couldn't find. My reading is primarily escapism. Great literature was when I was required to read it in college. Uh, the size of the library, I don't think any, I don't think we can take 10 people and get any five to agree on what size is needed. The money is the same situation. Uh, uh, people smarter than me will figure that out. I thoroughly agree that the children's sections need to be enhanced. When they're reading at an early age, they're going to keep reading. You know, uh, they may play with their computer games, but if they read a book now, they're, used, they're going to be imprinted with a book. Uh, one comment I've got that I think the plans probably don't address is sound control between adjacent rooms. There have been events in here, I don't know if it's the exercise plan, or boom, 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 boom. Uh, there are ways to keep the sound from going through walls. You can put expensive acoustical treatment on the wall. 
The cheapest way is another line of concrete blocks face four inches out and you put four inches of sand between them. The mass will reduce the sound transfer and it requires no upkeep. It requires no cleaning. Uh, I have no problem with the services we get here. Uh, well, I do have a problem. I had a hit and run out in the driveway and the uh, fine video camera was na wasn't able to identify the victim, the uh, perpetrator, although we saw on the hitch who it was. <laughs> Higginson. I'm a retired professor of literacy education at Murray State and a member of Friends of the Library. At the library board meeting last week, we were encouraged to provide ideas for the future of our library. I've just been looking at the plans and some of the things I'm going to say uh, are already in the plans, some are not. But I looked at characteristics that should be considered as we seek to transform an outdated public library into one that meets the needs of all community members. In essence, this is a reimagining of the library as an engaged community learning center. While a 21st century library should most certainly contain books and pr other printed material, the building should also include the following. Really comfortable reading areas with a variety of seating op options, private spaces for small group research and individual tutoring, open pleasant spaces, and it's been mentioned, an attractive children's book area with appropriate seating and tables, very innovative book displays, a digital studio to enable users to create and use multimedia material, a computer center, small and large community rooms for library and public group programs, an area designed to appeal to adolescents that includes relevant technology and allows for group interaction, and of course ample office and workspace for employees and volunteers. I realize that the above may appear to be too much for a local library. However, these are the types of spaces that are incorporated into new and renovated community libraries across the country. I believe that this community has the will and the means to accomplish this task and that it only requires vision and determination. Carl Sagan, astronomer, astrophysicist, and author said, the health of our civilization the depth of our awareness about the underpinnings of our culture and our concern for the future can all be tested by how well we support our libraries. We are well into the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to mispronounce Yes. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, it's Nita Tom Tunney. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Diane Nittatom Tunney, and I love the library because it provides important resources for my family and our community. I support a library expansion because we need more space. I am a parent and an educator. Public libraries have cultivated my love for learning. From an early age, my parents brought us to the public library to show us the importance of learning and learning with our fellow community members. They made a big deal about getting our first library cards. With my brother and our two best friends, I spent many afternoons after school and many more summer days in the children's department. When we entered junior high, we began working with primary school students to practice reading, telling stories, and playing literacy, ga literacy games. This and many other programs instilled a love of literacy and led me to become an educator. We need more space here to continue current programming and we need to plan for the future. We do not have enough dedicated space for our youth. As Callaway County grows, which it is projected to grow to four, more than 41,000 in the next 10 years, we need a library expansion to provide the physical space for our youth to grow and develop. I support the expansion for our youth, their families, and all of our families. Thank you. Amanda Zaru. Mm -hmm. Hello and thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. My name is Amanda Zaruth and I'm the owner of Canterbury Day School. It's a small in-home daycare preschool um, li licensed by Kentucky and located right here in Murray. And I want to speak for some of our smallest library users, our little preschool guys. Hopefully they're all home tonight uh, getting ready for bed. But they're going to they're gonna be able to benefit from, from this. Every two weeks, the outreach program comes to my school and I'm sure many many areas around the county um, I can't convey the excitement my children feel when I tell them Mrs. Curtis is coming 
and how professional she is. She takes the time to look at my lesson plan for the next two weeks and hand selects appropriate books and the concepts I'll be teaching. She makes sure they're age appropriate and fun and she goes above and beyond um, anything I could ever expect. And, you know, we lost power a few weeks ago. She brought me books on electricity so the kids would know why their house was dark. That's, the, that's what this library does. And that's why it deserves our funding. Um, one of my goals as a preschool teacher is to impart a love of, of reading to my students. And to do that, one must have books to share with the children. Um, without this wonderful library, I would have to severely limit the number of books to which my children are exposed. And not just them, uh, I'm, I'm sure children around the county would be limited. Uh, because of this library, their education is enhanced. And when they're not with me and they come here with their parents, they can take advantage of all the computers and the resources that we have here. And these resources need to be there for them. You know, I remember when I was here um, bringing my young son to story time, it gave me a connection to this community after leaving my home. And it gave me the confidence to open a business and, and try and contribute. You know, in our school. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and I'd certainly uh, uh, extend uh, uh, my thanks to the uh, trustees for this opportunity. I've been a Murray resident since 1975. In June of that year, I moved to Murray from Colorado, and having been a user of public libraries throughout my life up to that point, I visited the library here. I was not disappointed. It was a very fine library in 1975. Um, and. I continue to visit it from time to time. I'm an avid recreational reader. Um, however, since I moved here to today's day, Callaway County has increased by nine to 10,000 people, depending on whose figures you look at. We have attracted new industry. We have expanded our shopping areas. We have added subdivisions, but, and that's a pretty big but, I'll speak specifically to one aspect of library use, and that is a Center for Information Technology and access to the wider world of knowledge beyond what you can find on the shelves uh, and stacks of the library. I have worked as a human services professional, and I have been involved in the oversight and, adv uh, and advisory functions with information technologies throughout my career. The intersection of these two areas is what I would like to address. Access to information technology is a major element in social mobility. It is a social utility as much as roads and water access. I'm talking about the availability via technology of access to the diversity of our human world and the accumulated wisdom, history, science, and art of our history as human beings. It's clear to me that access to computers and therefore having access to this world of information is a factor that will, if not made available to all, those of us who can afford them ourselves or those who cannot, is essential to social, uh, prevent social stratification. Ray Horton. <clears throat> Thanks for this opportunity to uh, speak. Uh, my name is Ray Horton. I'm an English professor at Murray State, but I want to speak to concerns about the library, not as a professor, um, but as a fairly new resident of Callaway County and as a parent. Uh, my daughter Emerson is 11 months old. She's there in the back right now. Um, she was born here in Murray just a few months after me and my wife, Erin, uh, moved here from Ohio. Uh, so while we may be newcomers, you could say that Emerson has lived here her whole life. Uh, <laughs> We recently brought her to the library for the first time, um, and frankly, it was a bit disheartening. Um, you see, most of my earliest and fondest childhood memories come from the Erie County Public Library. I grew up in a lower middle class household in western Pennsylvania. Neither of my parents finished a four-year degree, and our opportunities were limited, but they brought us to the library every week. This started when I was too young to remember. Fast forward to today, this morning I taught American poetry to future English teachers. Given my background, I don't think I'd be doing any of that, if I hadn't spent so much of my childhood reading in the library, participating in library programs, or just looking around and seeing other people absorbed in their books, our library made reading part of the texture of everyday life. I want that for my daughter, and I believe that's what so many members of this community uh, want for their children as well. 
You can imagine our disappointment when we saw the crowded conditions that so many have already described. Four chairs and a table to share among every child in the community. For a small child like Emerson, there's really nothing. We had to sit on the floor, in the corner, in front of an office door, uh, hoping not to disturb other patrons. As Emerson grows up, we need to ask ourselves, what message will it send her and other children when uh, the library is a source of public controversy? My family is thrilled to be part of this community, and I truly hope that the board will look to its future uh, by supporting the library expansion. Thanks. Um, thank you. I'm Julie Szeski, and thanks. Um, and thank you very much. Um, I love what the Callaway County Public Library offers my family. Um, my husband and I have a kindergartner, a preschooler, and a new baby. And I love what my kids are learning from the books that we pick out together. I was recently on maternity leave, and the library kept me stocked in books as I was reading constantly when I was up at 2 in the morning. But there's not enough space for the library to meet the needs of Murray and Callaway County. Um, when I bring my kids to the library, we have to be focused on getting in and getting out. Um, my kids are little, they get restless, and I feel like I need to make room for other people. Um, it's in everyone's interest that our kids can hang out around books, have a safe place in town to do so, and that there can be space for them to be in the library and be kids without feeling like we're imposing on other patrons. The library needs more shelf space, more room for young kids to sit and play and be read to, space for older children doing homework, and people of all ages to use the computers and the internet access. The library's holding story time, summer programs, community discussions, these events and services are really crucial to our community as we've been hearing tonight. I support the expansion so that the library can make even more of an impact. Thank you. McCarthy. Hi, I'm Maeve McCarthy. I work at Murray State and um, I'm here on behalf of my children. So this evening I said I was going to this meeting and uh, my kids wanted to know what it was all about so I filled them in a little bit and my, my nine-year-old said she wanted to come but she has homework and bedtime and so on so she's not here. But uh, I asked her, what would you say if you came? If I gave you my time, what would you say? And she said, I love the library, I love the books, Miss Sandy is great. <laughs> so I really think it's important for us to not lose sight of the fact that this library serves our entire community from the very young to the very old. We have so much to offer in this community, but we need to expand the library to move with the times. I think it's time for us to in increase the number of um, electronic resources available, the number of computers available, the space for middle schoolers and high schoolers to come and do their homework, um, the programming for kids the fiction for grown-ups, the non-fiction for grown-ups, all the political novels, all that kind of thing. Um, I, I think it's really important that we invest in our community and an expansion of the library really will be an investment in Callaway County. Chris Taylor. Thank you for, <clears throat> thank you for listening. I've been using this public library for well over a decade, and I appreciate it for the services and quality children's programming it provides. The library is an important institution and invaluable resource for all age groups, but especially for children. There's not a whole lot of places you can take kids in Murray, especially for free, especially in such a wonderful learning environment like the library provides. It's so crucial. I have four kids, okay, so I can echo all of those things that you've already heard. We come in there, we take it over, and then we feel like we need to leave because there's other people coming in and they want to use this very finite resource of space. So my kids are loud. They love to play like kids should be. I, I grew up in the library, and you remember this? Shh. It's quiet, right? That's not how libraries should be. Libraries should have the space for children to be children and to learn and to love to learn. The, this, this is like a one-room schoolhouse and basically 15 feet away from the, the computer lab and 10, 5 feet away from a, a, a table where a tutor is trying to help a student. Okay, so my kids are all having a good time and I'm trying to, 
you know, calm them down, let's, let's be quiet, and it shouldn't be like that. They should have their whole area to themselves to do what kids like to do. I'm a property owner, I'm a taxpayer, and I support this expansion. Our tax rate is not that high. It's 5.9%. If you have a $100,000 home, that means you're paying $60 a year to this library. That's less than $5 a month. That's like a fancy coffee, okay? That's the current rate. If we need to pay more in taxes to get this done, we should do that. Thank you. Thank you, Board of Directors, for giving us this opportunity to speak, and thank you for listening, and thanks, community people, for being here and being supportive. I have had a library card to the Murray Kelly County Public Library since I was eight, um, and I use it all the time. My husband and daughter also use the library. So I, I'm going to give you three very specific experiences that I've had at the library and three kind of different um, services that the library offers why I think expansion is important. Um, the first of those is that I often come to the library for quiet space, space that I can work and think. Um, one time I set up at one of the tables, I had my laptop, I needed the internet, I was doing some writing that I just needed quiet, thoughtful space. Six yards from me and a group of people were having a lively discussion about a book and they should be able to do that but because they were talking and because of the open floor plan of the current space I was unable to get the work done that I needed to do. So I think dedicated space is appropriate, dedicated space for children, for quiet thoughtful work and also for lively discussion. The second experience is using this very room. I, I work with several nonprofit organizations and we've tried to schedule community meetings in this space and it has not been available. And I think that it's not been available because there are ongoing, ongoing groups that meet here. Um, so if you just need a periodic space, it was not available. So I think um, additional meeting room for the community is an important service that the library offers. And the third experience is books. And um, while I um, have come in and not been able to find the book that I'm looking for, and it's nothing obscure, it's, you know, contemporary fiction. And, and I know there's millions of books, you can't please everybody, you can't have all of them, but I'm hopeful that with increased space we'll have more shelves and more choices of books for the community. I wanted to close with that, oh, darn, thank you. Larry Tucker. First, thank you, and I want to thank the trustees for the time they dedicate and the work they do for this library. Uh, I am for expansion and renovation, but I'm also against incurring long-term debt and raising taxes to do it. While we need some expansion, we also need to consider that the operating costs of the library will go up with expansion. And I urge you to study this project and take your time in making a good decision. That's all I have. Thank you. Rhonda Henderson. Hello. First of all, I also want to thank you all for, for everything you do with the library. I'm, I'm a former library trustee, so I understand the time and dedication it, it takes to fill this position, and I do appreciate that, and I appreciate you opening up this opportunity for the town hall. Uh, also, I'm also the current president of the Friends of the Callaway County Library, so obviously I'm a library supporter, and I love all libraries, but obviously this place has a special special place in my heart. Um, everyone can thank Nancy because about half of my public comment is cut in half now because I was on the board with Nancy and Marshall for the strategic planning process and I was just going to reiterate what we heard over and over and over again was that there just was not enough space uh, for all the programming that's being done. And, and, and as Nancy mentioned in that 2011 uh, strategic plan, one of the things that the library management staff was tasked with was to uh, utilize uh, the existing space effectively. 
They have done so. They have worked so hard and tirelessly to make everything work. This community room stays booked all the time, and it's just amazing to me all the programming that they do, and, the, and when you look at the circulation numbers for the size of the library, it's just amazing to me. Um, so, so we've been talking about this, as Nancy said, for a long time. In 2005 was the first time that the board said, we need a building fund, and de designated to put money into it. And then every board since then has done that. So every board has seen the need that at some point, expansion a remodel was going to have to occur that it, to, to stay with the times and to stay with the growing population of Callaway County. Um, the Kentucky Public Library Association, in partner with the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives, provides standards for public libraries. These are government organizations that have been around since 1910. So I, I value what they have. They've got the experience uh, to, to give good guidance to libraries. Um, and, and they have three different standards. There's essential, enhance, and exemplary. And currently, Thank you. anybody can talk to me afterwards. I have more good points. Phyllis <laughs> Miller. I have been attending all regular library board meetings since December 2009, and I have only missed two in all that length of time. I probably have been to more board meetings than anybody in this room. Anyone. <laughs> During those nearly nine years, I witnessed 15 different trustees serve four to eight years each. They put in many, many hours of work and thought to get our ready, library ready to move forward. There has been no motion and no approval by any of the Callaway County Library Boards in renovating and adding to the existing building to use only the cash on hand. We are here for public input, which is good, but we should not neglect to honor the past documented input from the strategic plans that approximately 30 community members, trustees, and library staff worked on and implemented. Next was the 2014-2015 feasibility needs assessment that was the basis for the plans presented by 5253 Design Group during 2016. This architect, Chris Cotton Jim, was hired by the Board of Trustees on recommendation from a committee to select an architect. As chair of the financial needs committee of this assessment, here are some numbers to keep in mind. 13 million has been stated, but it was never stated as the cost of renovating and adding on to this library. The enhanced estimate is 7,692,344. The essential plan is 6411660 The building fund has a, over $3,000. Three, Three million, I'm sorry. <laughs> and if we build, add on to this library in phases, which was uh, pro projected, it would cost $8,144. Thank you. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Danielle Fernandez, I'm a Callaway County resident and thank you for being able to speak tonight. Um, I'll start by saying I support library expansion. I believe the people of Callaway County deserve a library that facilitates their needs. As some of the speakers tonight have mentioned, the size of our library is disproportionate to the public that it serves and I've seen this firsthand. I've worked as a nanny for a number of years, and whenever possible, I take advantage of the wonderful programs offered for the children here. However, a number of times I saw parents and their kids unable to participate in programs due to the limited space. While some have suggested that some library systems are seeing a decline in use, I can tell you from the popularity of story time, the summer reading programs, and other events that that is not the case. In addition, we have a limited space for the kiddos inside the library, as a, lot, as a lot of people have said, and it's difficult to sit down and be able to read out loud together without disturbing other patrons, and sometimes I've been those other patrons. When I first moved here to Murray, the library was my first friend. I came here when my husband got a job at Murray State, and I had no job and I had no friends, and so where did I come? I came here to use resources to look for jobs. Um, I try to sign up for a library card and you need someone that you don't live with to sign up and I didn't know anyone so I had to ask 
my husband's secretary to vouch for me. But so I guess the library was my first friend here. Um, <laughs> Expanding the library is good for our community and I believe the benefits far outweigh the cost. Um, I'd like to take a bit of time to thank the library staff for their hard work and for making our community a better place to live. They always know the kiddos' names and even at a young age have fostered their love of the library and reading and learning. Rosenberger. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, so I'm a Callaway County resident and I support fiscal responsibility and I also support library expansion. Uh, these two things are not competing ideas. Expanding the library is not akin to being financially irresponsible. Instead, it is an important act of community investment. The library serves a vast number of patrons that utilize its services and wonderful programs. These are all resources that have short-term and long-term benefits to our community. These benefits are educational, they're cultural, but these benefits also have an economic value. Of course, the library provides books, ebooks, music, movies. It provides internet access to Callaway County residents. It provides a space for community events. These and everything the library offers to the public represents a real financial benefit to our community. In short, I encourage the board to move forward with the expansion of the library because it will pay dividends. And I just want to add, those 31 extra parking spaces would have came in handy tonight, right? Katie Bates Robertson. Hello, thank you. I grew up in this town since 1978, and the library hasn't changed since I was little. Murray Calloway County has definitely grown, so have I, just not the library. In working with other groups and exploring spaces in need of expansion in order to meet the ever-growing needs of the community, I think about the spaces in Murray that are old and inaccessible. There are many. And then I think about the future, five years from now. If no changes are made, then in five years we will continue to be in a space that will need attention and upgrade a remodel. So in regard to the library, in five more years, if nothing is done, we will still continue to have the same problems, not meet the library standards for our population, and if by then nothing has been done, it will continue to, to reflect on our community the lack of support for this public institution. This discussion has already been going on for more than five years. Money has been set aside, changes has, have been discussed, doing nothing isn't an option anymore. One of the most used resources in this library is the room we are in. It is almost impossible to host an event here because the calendar is completely booked up with community events because it's a great place to have events. What a great problem to have. What if there was another room you would almost immediately have doubled the amount of community activity? This is the one place that I know that is open to everyone. It represents community and equality. The people of this county deserve the best we are able to provide. Residents need to be proud of a facility that welcomes out-of-town visitors, that provides services to those who cannot afford to buy books for pleasure, or that need books for learning, and so much more. The library is for each of us, whether or not we use it every day or twice a year. Libraries are a necessary public institution in small towns like Murray and across the U.S a point of reference for countless reasons. Please consider a renovation worthy of the future. Jessica Evans. Good evening, everyone. A cornerstone of any good community is the ability to provide for one another. And our Callaway County Public Library has been a provider for decades, not just in the books and the media, but the services that the library hosts and conducts annually. From book clubs to Zumba, the Callaway County Public Library creates spaces of inclusion and provides opportunities for enrichment for members of our community. The library expansion is important to me because it's important for all of us in our community. Essential as the Callaway County Public Library is, it cannot continue in its constrained way because it not only prohibits a physical expansion, but a reduction in the capabilities of the staff to continue to provide the essential services for our community. I visit the library regularly and I'm amazed at what the staff is able to accomplish. I can only imagine that with improved resources, the library staff can excel in their mission to provide free and equal access to information, material services, programs for personal enrichment, enjoyment, and lifelong learning. 
This expansion is more than just an expansion of physical space. It is a literal investment in our community. The Callaway County Public Library cannot continue in its current capacity because despite being in the top third of all libraries visited in the state, it currently does not meet ADA compliance standards and there's only 12,000 square foot to serve the nearly 40,000 almost registered users in our community. The Callaway County Public Library works to provide free and equal access for services and programs. We all understand the essentiality of the library. We all understand that when members of our community are provided a sustainable quality of life, they're able to thrive. Libraries preserve history and provide guidance for our future. Libraries uphold the fundamental belief that building knowledge can improve the quality of life. However, our library, and let me say that again, our library must grow to meet the needs of our community. An investment in the expansion of our library is investing in the quality of life for all of our citizens. Murray and Callaway County must approve you. this expansion. Shannon Davis Roberts. Hello, greetings and salutations and whatnot. Over the last three months, I've had the opportunity to work for Paul Walker. I came up with the idea for the Paul Walking Walker tour, and he had the idea of going to libraries and hosting town halls. So I have talked to every librarian, all of the directors in District 1, and let me tell you, libraries are a mirror to the communities that they serve. There are certain counties in our district that are closed every day but two because they have no money. There are libraries in our district, dr district that are expanding with renovations. Um, in Simpson County, they're going to have an auditorium. You know, um, our facility here does not reflect the values of Murray Callaway County. Murray School District is number three out of 168. Callaway County is number 21 out of 168. Murray State is a top tier university in academic quality for 28 years. But our library. People with limited mobility have no independence in the aisles. They're too small for wheelchairs. That must make them feel really horrible. I know because my dad was in one. As far as the size goes, it's been talked about. Our county is 26 out of 119 for population, yet our library is 113th out of 119 counties for space per capita. 2015, since 2015, um, all of the program attendance has, a, has grown by 20%. It is important that we, yes, invest in this library because if we're willing to invest in a jail, then we need to invest in a library to keep people out of the jail. I believe in this library, I believe that this county values education and ethics. We need to put an end to the vile discussion between the community and you all board members, it's not needed and it's childish. I respect you all. I hope that you can learn to respect me. Uh, I'm Whitney Jones Bolin. At last week's library board meeting, a serious misstatement was made about the potential cost of a library expansion. A board member said that the true cost of a $6.4 million library would be 13 to $15 million. That figure assumes that a $6.4 million project would be fully funded with a 30-year bond, without even touching the almost $3 million the library, the library has already saved for future construction. Why would the library not put that money to the cost of the project? CCPL has saved half the cost of the expansion over a decade of diligent budgeting and saving, and this math completely ignores that $3 million building fund. That figure also assumes a costly 30-year bond instead of a more reasonable 10, 15, or even 20-year fixed rate loan. It also doesn't take into account potential construction grant funding from the KDLA or donations from the community. The board member went on to say that a 15-year bond would be much cheaper, but still far more money than the six or seven million dollar figures that have been discussed. Here's the real math. A 15-year fixed rate loan at 4.02% for $3.4 million, the cost of the Essential Plus plan minus $3 million in existing funds, would have a total cost over the life of the loan of $4.53 million. That's assuming that the debt wouldn't be settled sooner. And that figure also doesn't take into account any grant funding or community giving. 
Interest rates and construction costs are on the rise. If this loan had been secured in August 2017, the lifetime cost would have been $4.27 million. In August of 2016, it would have been $4.15 million. Two years of delays have already cost taxpayers $400,000 in additional interest. Hilliard Lyons calculated last year that the library's current tax rate can more than accommodate the years of repayment necessary to pay off a loan of this size. Callaway County is lucky because unlike most of Western Kentucky, both our population and tax base are growing. I wasn't born here, but got here as fast as I could. Uh, as I look around the room, I doubt there's a single soul in here that doesn't think we're blessed to live in this community. And what makes a great community? Ask 10 people, you'll get 10 different answers probably. I guess uh, if I had to list my top four, I would uh, start with our uh, educational system, our two school systems, which are among the very best in Kentucky. Murray State University is a great uni uh, university, regional university. Uh, we have uh, parks. Uh, parks need a lot of help. We have a library, and the library meet, needs even more help. I've heard a term that bubbled up during the course of this process uh, called a Cadillac library. Uh, I have no problem with a Cadillac library. It's, uh, it's used as a purgative term, but it beats the heck out of a 1979 gremlin. <laughs> I look... I'd like to thank the board for, uh, for making this possible uh, because I've been on a few boards over the course of my life here in Murray and I got here the year before the library was built and I know some boards are tougher to serve on than others. I would ask you to give your best thought to this community, the best possible library possible for this, not just one generation but for all future generations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christopher Mitchell. Uh, I am a Murray State faculty member and a 12-year resident of Murray, Murray, Kentucky. I have two children and a wife who proudly live in this community and, and will continue to live in this community probably until past retirement. Um, we've already spoken to the, the needs of the children being met, so I'm not going to speak to that except to say that my children have grown up in this library and, you know, and Sandy and the staff know them very well. Um, and I hope that they um, are, are able to continue that and perhaps their children will be, be able to continue that as well. I want to um, bounce off some numbers off of Whitney Jones's comments there. My numbers are not exactly as accurate as hers, but just some rough figures here. Um, we have an approximate population of 38,000 people in Callaway County. If we spend $3 million in addition to the already $3 million that is in the account, uh, that would be approximately $78 per resident over a 30-year usage of the library. This one's already been here for 40-something, right? Okay. Um, that would be $2.63 per resident over 30 years. Okay. Not per year, $2.63 per resident for the life of the, the library. Okay. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Um, Value, the value of this library in this community is, cannot be spoken highly enough of. And I want you to also think about those new folks that are going to be moving into the large plants that are being built north of town and the new faculty and the new people that come to town and want to see a spanking, shiny new library to know that this community is committed to civic, democratic spending. It's okay to spend money. Okay. <laughs> This is, the only, this is the only place in town that is democratic and civic and anybody can walk in here and use this space. It's not a church, it's not a school building, it is a civic, democratic place. And that is for everyone and it needs to be expanded. Thank you. Meta. 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 Erica Meta. Thank you for taking the time to hear my concerns about the Callaway County Public Library expansion efforts. Recently, my church broke ground on a new fellowship hall. As the head of the buildings and grounds and a member of the vestry and construction committee, I played an integral part in this decision-making process that took nearly three years to execute. Plans were drawn up and plans were altered. We knew this important investment in our church was needed because we are a growing congregation and our properties no longer adequately facilitated our mission. Much of the same could be said for Callaway County. We're a growing community. 
and it's time that we thoughtfully begin the process of a library expansion in order to accommodate our ever-growing population and to be in compliance with the KDLA standards. Moving forward with an expansion now will mean that we may have a new library in two years' time. The longer we wait, the costlier this project will become. An expansion is an investment in our future. The right thing for the board to do now is to make the decision to expand. And then, finally, after careful and responsible preparation, thinking about the many different ways to fund this, there is not just one way, there are many responsible ways to fund this, we need to break ground and expand our library into the resource our community deserves. I'm going to ask the board a couple questions. Why are we here this evening? Is there, are there people that do not want a new library or an expanded library? Why are we here this evening? It is the responsibility of the Callaway citizens to tell the library board that we want a bigger library? Isn't it your job to make the improvements for the library that we so desperately need? Is this not your mission? It seems to me when I read that the library had cut 1% of the uh, budget this year, maybe the attitude is make do with a little less. Make do with a little less. Is that what your mission is? Second question. How many on this board had library cards in their wallets when they were appointed to the board? Are you library users? Do you visit other libraries when you're in other cities? I do. I enjoy evenings at the McCracken County Library. I use libraries in Illinois, Missouri, and in Pennsylvania where I visit often. And I go to those other libraries with my grandchildren. Do you take your children and your grandchildren to libraries? I've seen programs in libraries all over the different states that I've been to. What small meeting rooms with com comfortable seating do we have available for our book clubs? Where can a group pull up chairs to have an informal practice of Spanish or French? Where can people meet who want to work on crafts? Where can people ch climb on carpeted structures to read their books? Where do our children watch puppet shows at this library? Where is a corner for them? I would like to express my thanks to the staff of the Callaway County Library for all the many programs that they have done during the last seven years. They have done many numerous children's programs, book clubs, after school programs, computer services, book deliveries, ebooks and music, and many other services that I can't recall. These services have been successfully carried out with courtesy, with interest, and with persistence to the public by this staff. The library staff has done all the reports and manuals in a timely manner to keep the board abreast of what needs to be done each month and each quarter. We have a wonderful library staff that stays ahead of the needs of the present day library. Such a staff needs a library facility that can be available to serve the many citizens of the county. Murray has been voted in past years as the best place to retire and more recently as a fun town and a pleasant place to live. We have many persons who have now come here because of these honors and many more will continue to come because of these honors and because of possible future employments. We must give ourselves the best class library that will serve our community well for at least the next 50 years. Miranda Terry. Hello, my name is Miranda Terry and before I graduated from college I was working two jobs and I was struggling to make ends meet. 
I did not have access to internet except for at the public library. Internet was a luxury and I could not afford it. Did you know that 18% of Callaway County residents also don't have internet access for one reason or the other? But at the public library, there I was able to apply to go back to school because I had to stop because I couldn't afford to go. And I was able to go back and complete all the assignments when I did go back because I commuted an hour to my undergraduate school. And so I was not able to use my college resources that were available on campus because I was an hour away. If it was not for the public, public library and access it provided to computers and internet, I would not have had the opportunity to earn my undergraduate degree, which then paved the path for me to earn two master's degrees and my doctorate degree. My PhD is in community health with a specialization in disability studies. My overall research objective is to improve the rights and lives of people with disabilities and to address health disparities. Public libraries play a vital role in addressing health disparities. Did you know that 38% of Americans use libraries to seek out health information? This is why I'm a huge advocate for public libraries and recommend that renovations be at the exemplary level as defined by the Kentucky Department of uh, for Libraries and Archives as well as this will allow our library to meet the current and future needs of our community and save money in the long run as well as be more accessible for people with disabilities. And this is pretty much echoing the mission of the Murray Calloway County Parks that just had uh, built an inclusive uh, playground and so again we need to meet those needs thank you Melissa Porter yes um, my name is Melissa Porter and um, I'm a very big introvert so for me to come out here and speak to all of you it's very difficult for me but I feel that strongly that we need to renovate and expand our library for the kids in the community. Um, I'm not originally from Murray. I moved here in 2001, and I've used it ever since I moved here, which was before I had my children. My husband, my two sons, and myself, all four, have our own library cards that we use. Um, we are at the library five days a week after school. They do um, the homework club. Uh, although my husband and I are both capable of helping them with homework, um, it gives them a chance to socialize and they also get um, help in areas that we might be lacking in. Um, we use the internet. When my power or my internet goes out at my house in the county, um, we don't have cell phones, so I have no way to contact our service providers. So what do I do? I come to the library. Uh, to email people say hey our service is out um, and you know I've heard the statement that with technology today we don't need libraries because of the internet well where do people go when they need internet they come here to the library so it's um, I think it's that important and as a homeowner and a property owner um, I would like to support, I would gladly pay higher taxes for renovations as I've been trying to keep track of um, all the speakers ahead of me. I haven't really heard anybody say that they were not in favor of expansion and most of the people have come out in support of raising their taxes. So thank you. I, thank you. Kate Mizell. Hi, my name is Kate Mizell. I have two daughters who are two and four years old. When they were babies, story time was the very first program that they ever attended. They signed up for their junior library cards when they were barely walking and they weren't even tall enough to return their books up to the circulation desk. My oldest daughter stays up late reading every night, and I do mean every night. Um, my younger one loves to read about intestines for some reason. <laughs> we love the library. We come here a lot. Because of their exposure to so many books, my four-year-old began reading a few months ago on her own. When we come to the library, we check out as many books as we can carry home. The most books we checked out in one month was 150. 
150 books that I found scattered all around their room and about the house. 150 books that my daughters fell asleep to at night, sometimes with the books on their faces. 150 worlds that my kids became a part of. Now you can imagine what it would cost to buy this many books per month. Few families could afford that or have the space to store it. Yet the library gives this wonderful and invaluable opportunity to every member of the community, no matter their economic status or if they could afford to purchase that many books. The opportunity is given to all, but the library isn't capable of serving all. If you've ever been here after school lets out, you've seen how much it is stretching at the seams with our young people. We need renovation and expansion here now. We need programs for kids that don't require registration. We need more meetings room, meeting rooms for those programs. We need more than four chairs for little children to sit in and grow their love of books. We need step stools for kids to reach the computer so that they can look up books and in the bathroom so that they can wash their little hands. The library is the only indoor space in our community for kids to go when it is raining outside or if the heat index is very high. We need a space that's not an adult library, but a kid's one. Vincent Costello. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to talk basically, I guess, about the outreach programs and the early childhood development education programs. And uh, what I found out everywhere I've lived besides Murray, nobody does it better than the library does. You know, that's just a, that's a given. I, I talked to Sandy Leonard about the different programs that they have here, the outreach programs. The only thing is that we don't quite reach the outside of the county quite like we should. You know, uh, we're, we're going to do better at it, no doubt. Uh, I looked at the <clears throat> strategic planning guide and the and all the steering committees that I noticed on there looked like everybody did every phase of the operation like they were supposed to as far as finding out the information, doing the things that they were supposed to do, and I didn't see anything wrong with it. I looked at some evaluation numbers that were a little bit low, but I'm quite sure that they're probably brought up by now because what I was looking at was a couple years old, you know, as far as the steering committee thing. I think the best model for success would be to have buy-in from all our shareholders, and that would be the whole county. You know, there's probably about 11,000 or so, and... It, I'm not really sure on the numbers, uh, but they don't, live in the, they don't live in the city, basically. They're on the outside edges. We need to be able to provide services and programs to the far reaches of the county. Uh, it needs to be even all the way across the board. Uh, I've got a bunch of ideas on how to do that, but I'll have to keep it brief. There needs to be a mobile library of some kind bigger than a bookmobile. If it's an expando van that has to be drived by somebody with a CDL, I mean, where they can come up, set up, and the library sets up wherever it is in the county. And that's the only idea I've got right now to keep it short. I'll see you all. David Bailey. Uh, some people didn't figure that I should even say anything tonight because I've been here for 47 years, and they said that I was an now getting ready to become a great grandpa, and it was time for me to hang it up and sit on the sidelines. But I had to, like an old horse, you know, I had to get out for one more tour. Number one, bullet point number one, thank you all for having the hearing tonight. I've learned a lot here, and I appreciate all the brain power and the energy. Guys, you all, I wish I had some of that and I could bottle it so I could use it here the next few days when I run out of gas. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, bullet point number one. I was so thrilled to hear Dr. Ashley Ireland talk about the Murray State role in libraries here. And I would welcome hearing more from you. And also in the context of the eight libraries in the public schools that we have here. We have a public, have a library in each one of the high schools, each one of the middle schools, each one of the elementary schools. And so I would love to see how all that's going to relate together so it can be a seamless service to the entire community. So we can reach out to all those folk on the edges of the county that are not really being reached. Bullet point number two. 
uh, Marshall County High School and that terrible incident that happened over there reminded us that security is now a paramount issue for us. Every last one of us that have a, a little kiddo, and I had a little granddaughter that went to school for the first time uh, here uh, just a few days ago. We want to make sure that they're safe and secure in their school, and we're also going to want to make sure that they're safe and secure while they're here at the library. And I wonder if we're willing to carry the cost of what that's going to amount to because you're going to have to have paid resource officers in all the schools and in this library. Time's up, right? Thank you all. Lindsay Darnell. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I don't have any fancy statistics or numbers to share with you. My experience with the library is all personal. It has to do with family and children. Um, I'm originally from Owensboro, Kentucky. When I was growing up, I spent a lot of time at the library because I'm an avid reader. Um, it was a three-story library then, and since I've left, they've built a brand new library, completely updated, and it's just gorgeous. Uh, my husband and I came here when we were newlyweds. Um, so when we had our first child, um, I was a lonely stay-at-home mom. I didn't really know anybody, and the library was the first place I came. And I made friends there that I still have today. Uh, now I have three children, and all three of them have grown up in the library story time. Uh, Miss Sandy knows all of them since they were newborns. So um, it has been um, such a blessing to my family. We come here on a weekly basis, and we're still coming. They have the new story time. I think it's called Rockin' Retired Teachers, and it's, it's amazing if you haven't been to it. Uh, my five-year-old loves it. So um, I have read probably most of the children's books to my kids over the years. Um, it has just been so beneficial and such a blessing, and I know that it benefits and is a blessing to all of the families in the community. Um, it's, it's a wonderful place, Murray is, to raise children, and we're growing, and we really need to grow with our community. So I am all for the expansion. It will really benefit everyone. Thank you. public comments period. Um, trustees, could I have a, a motion for adjournment, please? So moved. It's been moved by Mr. Kennedy and seconded by Mr. Ramsey that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending. We appreciate it. Very good. So, please, everybody.